Well, hello, Miss Tavila Labar. Hello. How are you, my friend? I'm doing very well in Texas this Saturday afternoon. I'm doing great. Well, I just want to tell you, it is an honor. I feel so honored to have you here. This means the world to me that you were sitting here chatting with me. Thank you for coming to the house. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to even be invited to come and talk to you. So thank you so much for the invitation. You were one of my favorite um, people because of music, because of your music. I, I just, I, I'm fangirl. Oh, is it the world word fangirling? Is that a word now? <laughs> I fangirl well. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, okay. I, let me see. I know you, I always like to start out by saying we know each other. You don't know me. You don't know me from Adam. <laughs> but I feel I'm, like I know you for some reason. I kind of feel like we know each other. Yeah, well, that's, yes, that it, that's the way I feel about the sister thing. But yeah. um, I have followed you because of my friend and our mutual friend, Reggie Ham who is my coach, my brother from another mother, um, one of my favorite people on the earth. Um, I know you through him. I mean, I knew about you before that I'd heard of you, but I really got to know because he and I would sit and talk about music, uh, writing music, and you would come up. Your name would come up. And so that's how I got to know you. But um, I ask you to come on because... I'm in love with a new documentary that you, I don't know if I'm saying it right, you produced, you directed. Um, I'm not sure what 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 I should say or <laughs> or uh, you know what to what to call it, but that you're involved in uh, the new documentary. Um, where horses heal the soul is where the horses that? heal the soul. Where the That's horses it. heal the soul. Yes. I love I mean because because I've went and I've, I've done my research on it and so I was looking um at the videos that are being put out is it um you'll have the trailer to... our trailer yeah, yeah yes. there, there's been some little snippets of videos yeah. that I've... Well, we're starting to kind of just kind of drip out a few little little uh, mm -hmm. clips from the film we're just kind of rolling we've entered uh some film festivals. We just actually won uh, a merit award, special mention award at the Impact Docs Awards online. It's an online, like international uh, film festival for documentary films. So we're honored and so excited. That's our first little uh, recognition there. We're very excited about that. Yeah, the yeah. documentary, we started working on it several years ago. Uh, I was approached by some friends of mine in Georgetown, Texas, George and Barbara Brightwell. And they love this equine assisted therapy center in Georgetown called Rock Ride On Center for Kids, and mm -hmm. they've been very instrumental in uh, working with this organization, helping grow and build this organization. They donated 20 acres, I believe it was in '97 or 1998, to the now the CEO and founder of the founder at the time, Nancy Krennic. Uh, she had a mission, a vision to start a horseback riding therapy center in Georgetown, and she had one horse, I think four riders, four children that she had been working with, but she needed land. So George and Barbara donated 20 acres to help her get started with this program in Georgetown. And wow. it's grown like you wouldn't believe in the last 25, 26 years now, I think. And mm -hmm. they're touching so many people's lives, transforming lives through horses. And they use the phrase a lot, healing through horses. And mm -hmm. we know, and Nancy knows, and all the folks involved at Rock, God created the horse for a special purpose. And lots of people are connecting with horses, uh, riding, the motion of riding, it kind of emulates walking. So people who are in wheelchairs can't you know, get that type of movement by walking, but they can when they're put on a horse. And there's something about the motion and the way the horse's hips are made. Nancy's the expert telling the story. I, I don't know near as much as she knows about it. She's the expert, but... Um, that it really helps transform children, adults, veterans are especially helped by connecting with horses. Um, we were sharing that in our documentary film. We have four main characters, two veterans who have been in combat and uh, 
Iraq, Afghanistan, have had IED explosions, you know, injuries, traumatic brain injury, and also severe PTSD. But there's something about when they're around the horses, where they're grooming, walking the horse, touching the horse, or riding the horse, it calms their PTSD, it calms their minds, where they can be present and kind of put everything else aside and just focus on that horse. And it really is very effective. And, you know, young people with autism, uh, different, uh, you know, delay, de developmental delays, um, other types of uh, cognitive issues or injuries or, you know, any kind of physical disability or injury it really is helpful for riding. And we've, another thing that I'm so excited about in our documentary, we've actually uh, or followed Nancy Krennic uh, at, with Texas A&M University, all the, the, uh, the research that she's been doing for several years with Priscilla Lightseat. So we have mm -hmm. documented proof basically that this works and uh, it works with the motion of riding. They, they've done lots of research with sensors on the horses, on the saddle, on the bridle, on the rider, on a belt, on a helmet. And they've proven, they've shown through the research that the, the rider gets in sync with the horses. So it's amazing. And we're sharing these stories, other stories. And mm -hmm. you know, Nancy Krennic is a phenomenal human being. She uh, went and talked to the Georgetown Independent School District, her boss there. She was a physical therapist working with children with disabilities and working with physical therapy. And she noticed when people who were young people in wheelchairs were coming in with motorized wheelchairs or something about the movement young people who were nonverbal would start talking. She said, as Nancy says in our film, it kind of would light up their brain. They would start talking. And um, <clears throat> something clicked, you know, Nancy loved horses. She grew up in West Texas and she thought, I'm going to do something with horses and therapy. So mm -hmm. she went to her boss and said, I'm going to start this horseback riding therapy center. And her boss said, well, do you have a horse? And Nancy said, no. She said, do you have land? And Nancy said, no. And she said, do you know anything about horseback riding therapy, equine assisted therapy? Nancy said, no, but someday school buses will be brought here to bring children here to have this type of therapy. And sure enough, we have that in our film. It's kind of the opening part of the film. The school bus is rolling into the rock uh, parking lot there and bringing children in. So it's a very amazing story of Nancy's vision to help people not just children, but adults as well. And it kind of grew over the years. The Rock on Veterans started a little bit later on. But, you know, we're our desire is to educate people about this type of therapy because a lot of people don't know about this type of therapy, don't know it's available, don't realize that horses can kind of help with these issues. You know, a lot of people have therapy dogs and a lot of people don't realize that there is a connection to animals. And But there's something even more so, I think, with horses, horse a horse is an animal of prey so they have like ptsd like you know that that whole you know, not trusting and that fear but whenever they can trust someone you know there's a bond that can be made especially with veterans we've heard veterans talk about their connection with their you know fellow comrades there in, co in combat in the military that they always have their back but when they come back home from being in combat they, they people don't really understand what all they've gone through but the mm -hmm. horse, they feel like the horse is like part of their unit that they were in, like they can connect with that horse. So it's pretty amazing. Wow. And the stories are so inspirational. Um, it's a feature length documentary film. We're covering you know, different aspects of it and different stories, but the overall story is, you know, we're spirit and we're soul, as Nancy says in our documentary film, that, you know, the a, a line that she says, and it's how it's kind of the theme of rock the disability or that label that's been put on people really has nothing to do with who they really are. That's just oh, something that happened to their body. You know, they have a purpose. There's a reason that they're still here on this planet. And if, uh, if they're breathing, there's a reason they're still here. So that's the mission of this film is to share these stories. We're going beyond outside the arena, even showing what some of these uh, folks are doing in their lives outside, how this has helped transform their lives. And it, yeah, I'm so excited to be part of this. We started this several years ago. We had some bumps in the road with COVID and fundraising. And then, you know, with my, you know, having to move back to help take care of my mother. And I just kind of had some pauses in the production of the film. But yeah, I'm very thrilled to be part of this. Uh, we're excited. Hopefully get it out very soon on streaming channels for people to see this. That is so, the, I'm, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I have a, I have a friend 
In fact, she was my, um, she was a girl that was in my cabin. I was her camp counselor <laughs> and she is now in Colorado and she is working with horses. And wow. I, I, I want to get it correct, but I know it has to do with women that are coming out of prison. Oh, yes. I think transitioning back into, yeah. I think she works with them or they, her group, the group she's involved with, mm -hmm. but she's helped, I guess, help trains the horses or something. Wow. And um, also people that are coming off drugs that are yes. becoming sober, mm -hmm. they work with these horses and stuff and they do therapy with the horses. Yes. It's really cool. It is. Uh, you know, I was at I was at Rock a few years ago, and one thing I think is really amazing is they pray over the horses. They bless the horses that the horses will be used, you know, to help people, and they pray for the participants there. They're folks who come to Rock, uh, and other equine assisted therapy centers are called participants. Uh, but they, you know, they pray over them at the beginning of each session, like in sep September, I believe it is. But I I went to one of these sessions, and. Um, there was a young woman who was in the military who was there and she's not been in combat, but just being in the military in some situations that she's been in has yes. affected her has PTSD because of these certain situations. And she kind of was up leaning against this Mustang who's now in the therapy horse herd, you know, his name is Mucho Moss, Moss. I think they call him Mooch short for short, but she was just calmed down. And after we talked a little bit, one, another evening when I was there, she started crying. She said, I just feel like connected to him. Like there's something about being just near this horse. And she wasn't even riding the horse. She was just near the horse. There's something about horses that I'm not an expert and I don't claim to be an expert. And I'm, I'm observing as a documentary filmmaker, I'm, I'm observing what's happening here. But it seems to me like the horses have empathy, like they they empathize with whatever the human is feeling or experiencing. And the horse can pick up on those emotions. So I read something just the other day, I think it was on another Facebook page of another equine assisted therapy center. It said, I think the horse can hear your heartbeat. Like I forget how far away it is. It's like unbelievable that the horse can hear our heartbeats. So yeah, they can connect with whatever the human is feeling. The horse can feel that and sense that. Yeah. So it, it's, it's blown my mind. Um, I'm not a horse person. I never grew up around horses. Uh, but I've been drawn to horses, especially I do a lot of photography. And so I've been drawn to take pictures of horses. They're majestic. and They're so beautiful. And I don't know why I have this big picture over my fireplace. I've had for several years before I was even involved in this project. I, I was just drawn to that charcoal portrait of this horse. I don't know. Maybe that was like a precursor of what I was going to be doing a few years later. But I, something about that really caught my attention and I, it's a mystery kind of almost. I've heard people use the term mysterious or something mysterious about that connection. But I believe it's a God connection. I believe it's just another way that God uses his creation, a horse, to connect and help people find healing and hope even and, and purpose in their lives. And that's kind of what we're trying to show in this documentary film that, you know, everybody has a reason to be here. Everyone has a purpose. And the characters, Todd, was in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and his Humvee blew up and exploded, you know, and he was injured uh, and several of the gentlemen in the Humvee died in that explosion. And then, you know, he had a brain injury, had a fit, bad physical injuries in his leg. So he came back from combat, you know, come back from Afghanistan and he, he felt like he didn't have a purpose. He, you know, he was, but he started going to rock after a little while and he started connecting with the horses. So he's kind of, he has an amazing story. Will, is the gentleman you see in the beginning of the trailer. He's lifting weights in the gym, this big, you know, mm -hmm. muscular guy with tattoos. Um, and he was uh, in, joined the military and he was 18 years old. He was in two Gulf Wars in Afghanistan. So all he's told me, it's not in the film, but what he kind of shared with me is like, he's always known war and his adult life, you know, and that uh, it, but he had severe PTSD and he was, he was at a place of no hope he was kind of suicidal a few weeks before he came to visit rock for the first time. And we were finishing filming for the first week and someone found out that he lived pretty close to rock so that his wife had already been trying to get him to go to rock. She knew he needed this type of therapy. had a feeling this might help him. And um, he was, had been hesitant, but they, 
he agreed to come the first time he came we filmed him his first interaction with the horse and mm -hmm. it was amazing it's a little bit snippet of that's in the trailer but in the documentary it's very it's very moving to see how afraid he was and it's a the big boy big horse playboy who's the alpha at the time he was the alpha horse in the herd there big big horse and he's very afraid you can see the fear in his eyes and the the, the gentleman kevin brings out the who works with the veterans at rock he brought the horse out and the horse just lowered his head and just walked up to will and licked him on the arm and will just melted <laughs> it's like the horse knew that he was afraid and the horse wanted him to kind of not be afraid it's very amazing it's this beautiful moment in the film another uh lead character in our film is hunter she's amazing an amazing young woman she has cerebral palsy she's been wheelchair bound her whole life but she is fierce. This girl definitely has a purpose and she's very an outspoken advocate, very uh, much a force to be reckoned with to help uh, talk to congressmen, senators, and try to make changes uh, with laws that affect the disabled. So she's an advocate for disabilities. So she's amazing. We're following her journey in the film and another young lady named Faith who has Down syndrome, who was told, her parents were told there was 0% chance this young, this baby would be, would, would live. So they kind of recommended abortion and they did not want to do that. They wanted to trust God. And this young lady is amazing. She's doing all kinds of amazing things. Her name is Faith. And as her mom says, as her mom says in her film, a little faith goes a long way. So they're, they're pretty amazing. Story. And Nancy Krennic's story, the founder and CEO of Rock, her story is amazing as well. All that she's done and just everyone out there who works, who works there, their participants there, the volunteers there. It's a place of grace is what the founder or the, the folks who produced the film, George and Barbara, which have both passed away in the last year. Uh, yeah. So they're, but we're kind of carrying on their, their vision is to get this film out and to, and to reach as many people as we can with this message about how this kind of therapy really does work. And this connection of horses can help so many people. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, tell us, if you don't mind, going back and telling a little bit of your history, your, uh, where you grew up, where sure. you, how did you get into writing music? How, what drew you to music? What drew you to documentary work? You know, it's all kind of, um, I don't know, God has a path for us and it's kind of like accidentally discovering a path. I don't know, but I knew it in early age and my parents figured out at an early age that I was drawn to music. I was always beating on things, you know, drumming on the tables and Tupperware bowls. And I was five, six years old, driving my parents nuts, beating on everything, you know. So then we started attending church when I was nine and there's lots of music in the church that we were attending in West Virginia. I grew up in West Virginia and, um, you know, I was just drawn to the drums, you know, just that was my focus. So I love drums. And when I was 12 years old, the drummer had joined uh, the Marine Corps and he was 19, I think at the time. And I had, you know, always was watching him playing the drums. And he came to me, he said, I think you need to be the drummer at the church. He said, I'm leaving to go to the Marine Corps. I'm going to be gone for several years. I said, I don't have to play drums. He said, I think you can learn to play the drums. I said, well, okay. So I was like practicing on my legs, you know, driving, riding the school bus to school every day. And so I just learned to play the drums in front of the whole church, basically. So I didn't know what I was doing, but I learned to play the drums. And the same thing happened a little bit later uh, in our, our church. It's now, it's a, uh, now I think it's the Apostolic Tabernacle in St. Mary's, West Virginia. Terry Law, who's a pastor, Pastor Terry Law, he asked me to participate and be involved in working in the Christian school. I just graduated and I wanted to be involved in academics. He said, no, I want you to be the music director of the school. I said, I don't know wow. anything about music. I play the drums. I play the trumpet a little bit and a saxophone a little bit and he said well I want you to have a choir and a band and teach band I said I don't know anything about music he said I think you can learn he said so kind of the same thing as the young man told me about the drums so I believed him that I could learn to do it so I figured it out and I, I learned to play the piano they wheeled a big upright grand piano like a saloon type of piano in my house that summer and I drove my dad nuts playing the piano trying to figure out how to play the piano so um so I was starting to learn about how to be a choir director, how to work with a band. And I started learning about music through those six years that I, that I worked at the school. And I loved every minute of it. I loved working with the children, the kids, the teenagers. I loved it so much. And I loved music. So 
fast forward, uh, you know, I, I was adopted at birth and I always knew I was adopted. My mother was told she could not have children. Then a week after I was born, my mom found out she's pregnant for my sister, Tanya. So she's uh, literally nine months younger than me. Wow. So, you know, we um, grew up going to church and just surrounded by music. I was very drawn to black gospel music. I love the Clark sisters, you know, all these black gospel choirs. I was so drawn to that kind of music. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was 29 years old, I was really started 28 years old. I started feeling this some kind of a burden, I guess, for my biological mother. Like I kept feeling like I need to let her know I don't hate her. I'm so thankful that she gave me life, you know, and I just kept feeling a burden. Like she was feeling so guilty or something full of shame or grieving. I don't know. So I started out on a quest to find my biological mother. That was before the internet. And my sister was helping me, Tanya. So we worked for about a year just traveling around West Virginia, going to courthouses, trying to find records, different things. And I started finding hints, documents over that year, the course of that year. And then I found my biological mother in 1994. And mm -hmm. I was so excited. I was very nervous. And that's a whole long story. I won't go into all the details, but I'd never really thought about who my biological father was all my life. I always kind of was curious who my biological mother was, but for some strange reason, it never entered my mind. I wonder who my father is, but she immediately told me when I first talked to her on the phone, who my biological father was, he's the musician. He's the one that's a tremendous musician. His family is very musical. So I met him uh, several months later and he's a, was a bluegrass musician, tremendous, tremendous bluegrass musician, played all different instruments. His wow. son, Anthony Hannigan, was the mandolin champion, Gibson mandolin champion in 1999, I think, and tremendous musician. He's passed away. They're both passed away now, but Anthony and I bonded and kind of clicked over the years through music, and that, that's where the music came from. I guess it's him kind of in my DNA because they were very, very musical, and um, I just never was into bluegrass music. So, you know, then I went to Nashville. My dream was to be a songwriter. I started writing songs at 12 years old. And I just uh, wanted, I knew at 15 years old, that's what I want to be. I want to be a Christian songwriter. I wanted someday to have people recording my songs. So I moved to Nashville in 1995 and had some connections from a few trips I'd made to Nashville from West Virginia. I, I was connected to Word and at the time, I uh, can't remember the name of that label, uh, that publishing company, I don't think they're around anymore, but I, I connected with several publishing companies and Benson was one as well. And they all encouraged me, but they would all encourage me you definitely have a lot of potential. We need to we need to write with co-writers to help refine, you know, bring it to a higher level. So when I moved to Nashville. I was writing with uh, Gary McSpadden, Sean McSpadden's company, McSpadden Smith. And mm -hmm. they started helping me connect with other writers and just kind of, I was growing as a writer. My first cut, as they call it, you know, when someone's recorded your song, was in 1997. Sue Dodge recorded two of my songs on her, on her album. And I was thrilled. I was so excited. And I, I loved writing. I still love songwriting. And that was my main focus in, in my life for many, many years, 15 years. I think I was in Nashville. So I, uh, I had life changes, brought me to Texas in 2009. I came back, to, moved to Texas and I immediately felt like, okay, this is, I love Texas. I fell in love with Texas and I wasn't writing as much. And I started kind of dabbling in video editing. I thought, hey, this is kind of like music production. I was doing some production a little bit in Nashville. And I thought this is very similar to programming tracks, you know, like layering things. And and I was kind of working with a few people, um, do a documentary filmmaker who was working on a documentary at the time about Jerry Jeff Walker, who wrote Bojangles, that the singer song. Yes. I wasn't involved in that documentary, but I was working with that documentary filmmaker on something else, another little little video project. And he encouraged me, said, if you're a songwriter, you'll know how to tell a story in a, in a documentary film. So he really encouraged me. Uh, so I just started working on little projects and they were documentary style, little videos for companies and businesses. And then I went on staff at my church and worked for five years on staff at my church in Austin, Christian Life Austin, doing video production. I was learning as I was going, kind of like before when someone who kind of believed in me was telling me, you can learn how to do this. And I believed them. So I was learning and growing. So I call myself an accidental filmmaker. Didn't mm -hmm. ever dream I'd be going down this path. I thought songwriting is where I'll be going in most of my adult life. And in 2015, George and Barbara, Bright, Barbara Brightwell approached me about doing a documentary film about a hospital in Georgetown, this story, like the history of this hospital, Georgetown, St. Yeah. David's Hospital. Yeah, so I, just, I 
to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I worked on that film for a few years, and it's it's history, the history of all that. And I was learning about how to make make a film. And then I worked on another film called Blanche. It's on Amazon, uh, a comedy, cute little comedy, a West Texas comedy film called Blanche. And then I had the opportunity to work on another film called Ten in Texas. It's on Amazon now too. We just released that one last winter. But where the horses heal the soul, when I had that, George and Barbara Brightwell approached me about this because they're very involved at Rock Rattle Center for Kids, and I was like, "This is it. This I'm so excited about." helping share these stories of these participants at rock and what all the horses doing and how it's changing their lives so it's kind of been a long journey getting here i'm kind of later in life becoming a filmmaker and learning about filmmaking but i'm very grateful because i i um i i love filmmaking it's not easy it's a very complicated process especially to create a documentary film like this it took a lot of work lots of help worked with great cinematographers from salt lake city who I brought in, Mike Eldridge and Tony Hagedorn. They're tremendous filmmakers in Salt Lake City. And I just thought, you know, their background working with uh, horses or camera work, work with veterans and Mustangs and horses. I thought they, they will fit perfectly with this project. And they were phenomenal to work with me on this project. Other wonderful people that work with me on this project. I, It's not a one-man show at all. I, I need a great group of people around me to help me. I, I'm learning as I'm going. I'm, uh, you know, would be lost without these people helping me. And especially like George and Bar Barbara Brightwell, the producers, um, they were so supportive and just so kind and loving through this whole process. And they're they were so excited that these stories would be out. And they're actually in the film telling talking about the history of rock. So I'm excited for people to hear their stories. You know, George and Barbara as well. So I'm just honored to be able to be part of this project. I just thank God all the time that I'm able to be part of it. it it's been a long journey and I know for the folks who are involved in the film I'm sure they're thinking why but it takes so long to make a film but a documentaries take a while to bring everything together because there's change that's happening you know you have to kind of have time to show change is happening with the characters and yeah I can't I just can't wait for us to share it we're so excited to get get it out there I am um, I, yeah I've been kind of finding ways to share <laughs> what what you guys have put out there already I'm kind of sharing it in advance oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So we're trying to grow an audience and trying to let people know about it. We're we've entered the Equus Film Festival in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We'll be hopefully we'll be going to that in November. So we're real mm -hmm. excited about that's a film festival with films about horses, you know. So we're thrilled about being part of that film festival in November. I think we've also been selected for a film festival in Franklin, the Tennessee International Indie Film Festival in November. We'll be they'll be showing our film in, in November in, in Franklin. Yeah, so I'm excited yes. about that too. Love it. That is so awesome. No, um, well, um, tell us more. I mean, what, okay, now that you've kind of got this, um, this documentary kind of, you're getting ready to put it out there. Is there anything else in the works? No, yeah, I'm there's nothing else in the works right now. I'm always looking for new projects. You know, I kind of have an idea of something I'd like to work on in the back of my mind, but um I'm just doing lots of editing and right now we're getting ready to we're launching this documentary film. That's my main focus right now. Um mm -hmm. you know Reggie Ham, your great friend Reggie Ham is part of our documentary film. I want to mention that as well. Reggie uh wrote a song for the theme song that's at the ending credits of this film called I Move. And there, what, and I was relaying to him about, you know, the motion of the horse. And he knows a little bit about equine assisted therapy, he and his wife. And mm -hmm. uh, we're thrilled that Reggie's song is kind of like going to be our theme song for this, this movie. It's in the ending credits, but we'll be released. I'm hoping he'll be releasing that song soon as well. Yeah. And he's, he's the artist. He's singing it. They record it in Nashville. It's, it's, ex, it sounds excellent. Love Reggie's songs, love his voice. So we're thrilled that he's part of this movie as well. Yeah. So that's so I awesome. get that out there. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Well, sis, um, is there anything else you want to add? Or well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think I've talked, I probably just talked a mile a minute here. So, but I'm just super excited about it. These, these, uh, the characters will be sharing a little bit more about the characters on Facebook. i if you go back on where the horses heal the soul, Facebook page, Instagram, and we're on threads as well. So um, but I'm introducing the characters a little bit at a time and we'll, we're sharing more, we're sharing about, you know, being selected in these 
festivals as well. We, we hope to be on Amazon and Apple TV sometime. Hopefully that takes a little while. That process takes a little while. So hopefully sometime at the end of the year, maybe after the first of the year, I'm not sure when, but we're just excited about sharing that there's hope for people who may not have any hope, like especially these veterans, they may have tried other types of therapy and it doesn't work. You know, the day we were filming, one of the days we were filming with uh, at Rock with some participants in the arena with the horses, we had gotten word that at the Veterans um, Administration office in Austin, downtown Austin, a, mm -hmm. a combat veteran had come in to talk to his therapist. He did not feel like he received what he needed and he walked out into the lobby, it's national news, and he shot himself, killed himself in front of people in the lobby. He was desperate, was not finding the hope he needed with the veterans. And I'm not bashing the veterans administration. My dad was in the military and you know, as part is as a veteran. But they there's some things that just aren't working with veterans. You know, there's some types, some a lot of therapies do work, lots of sit, you know, lots of different organizations provide wonderful, wonderful resources for veterans, but some veterans need this type of therapy, you know, and this is really working at Rock and other equine assisted therapy centers, working with horses. Um, there's just something about it, the connection that they have with the horse. It's very healing to veterans. So that's, we're really passionate and excited about getting this, this message out there for a lot of people who may not have thought about this type of therapy, that it really, it really does work. As someone says at the end of our movie, who worked with veterans for many years at Rock, says it really is medicine. We're not claiming it's medicine, but it's it's healing. And you know, it's um, if their PTSD can be calmed down, then they can. It, it's helping every area of their lives. One of the wives of one of the participants here, uh, Todd's wife, said, you know, it just kind of helps with everything. Their family life, you know, like it's. Because if the veteran, if he's married and has, has children or whatever, that's affecting his trauma is affecting the family as well when he comes back from combat. So if they have peace, if they can have calmness, you know, that's going to help with their children, with their spouses, their family members. So it's, it's you know, it affects the whole family. And that's what Nancy Krennic also, Nancy Krennic also talks about in our film that that's when they started learning with Todd and his wife, Tara, and their son Liam, that it's not just the horseback riding therapy and all this is not just helping the veteran, it's helping the family. It's a whole family type of therapy. So yeah, we're just hoping that this is going to connect with a lot of people and help that they'll be able to find equine assisted therapy centers in their areas. So yeah, we're just thrilled. I'm thrilled to be part of it and I'm thrilled that we're getting this out for people. So and God uses the horse. That's that's the last thing I guess I can say about it. That I've learned that God, God uses horses to help people here. And that's my little dog, my little support animal. As you hear in the background barking, yes, he needs a support animal. He's a he's oh. a dorky flat a dorky dachshund mix, mix. So he needs a little support animal. He sounds like his name is oh. Kobe, the brat, right now. So I apologize for him barking. Oh, no, no, no. We we <laughs> have animals here. But, well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. It's been thank such a so much. I'm so thank honored to have you. you. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor to talk to you, Donna. Thank you so much. Well, I, it, um, I believe God put our path together. I yes. believe that. Definitely, yes. I feel like and, I've known you. Like I said earlier before we were, we were recording, I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like I've already met you. Like I already know you. <laughs> Well, it, it's, I think it's a God thing. And yeah. um, again, I'm honored and thank you again for sharing um, a, about the documentary and sharing your heart with us. It means, it means so much. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to see the film. I'm really, really excited. I'll let you know when we're, we'll be releasing it. So thank you so much, Donna. I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Well, God bless you, sis, and I'll look forward to talking to you again in the future. Sounds great. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.